Yakuza Like a Dragon is the series' most dramatic reinvention yet, starring an all-new cast, a larger city to explore, and most crucially, a move away from 3D brawling to turn-based JRPG mechanics. The changes go further still, built on the Dragon engine as introduced with Yakuza 6 and Kiwami 2, like a Dragon shows a major upheaval in visual quality all round. The familiar Kamurocho area returns, but a sprawling Yokohama-inspired city opens up later too, showcasing a huge upgrade on any Yakuza game before it. Lighting, modelling, effects, and even the scale of the environment are boosted significantly. Today we revisit Like a Dragon after our original preview on Xbox Series X to see, well, how the final game plays on all next-gen machines, PS5, Series X, and S. A heads up, there is a key change in functionality since the preview, but how do the three versions compare visually? And do they all offer up robust 60fps performance modes? Let's find out. Now, it's been a long wait since the last mainline entry in the series, so before digging into Like a Dragon, let's take a quick look at how far we've come. Yakuza 6 came out back in 2016, and while we've certainly had remakes and spin-offs since then, like Judgment, Yakuza 6 is an interesting yardstick to measure against. For a start, there isn't a PS5, Series X, or S native app for the game as yet, so playing on PS5 today gives us a locked 1080p picture at 30 frames per second, just like on PS4 Pro Winset 4K output. Likewise, on Series X right now, the game is capped at 1080p 30 with limited anti-aliasing to hide a rather visually noisy looking picture. The Tokyo district of Kamurocho is familiar enough though. The density of the streets littered with glowing signs, the separate day-night states, and even tricks like screen space reflections, motion blur, all have an impact in portraying a living, breathing city. And of course, many of the objects feed into the brawler-style combat with physics interactions. How about Yakuza Like a Dragon then? Taking a look at the same streets in Kamuro Cho, there's a move to high grade textures, plus better material lighting on character skin and hair. A lot of this is beautifully demonstrated in special moves, with dramatic bursts of alpha filling the screen for most options. In general, we get a more detailed modeling of characters on the streets, but the key upgrade above all of this is its presentation on next-gen consoles. Where Yakuza 6 is fixed at 1080p 30 on PS5 or Xbox Series X, the latest game gets more focused support. A so-called normal 60 frames per second mode runs by default, but there's also a 4K high resolution mode that runs at 30fps. At its core, the game is bigger in scope than Yakuza 6, but the power of next-gen machines lets us tap into this world in these two new ways, with their own pros and cons. So how do these two modes work on each console and what of Series S? Okay, so two modes in the final release, a normal mode and one for high resolution. The basics are, normal mode runs at a native 1440p and 60 frames per second on both PS5 and Series X. Meanwhile, you have a true native 4K at 30fps in the other mode. Again, this goes for both premium consoles, PS5 and Series X alike, while Series S offers the same two modes, but at different set resolutions. Series S drops its normal mode native res to 900p instead to achieve 60fps, while its high resolution mode runs at 1440p capping at 30fps. It makes a lot of sense, a lower spec machine with accordingly lower pixel counts, though surprisingly there's no dynamic resolution scaling here to speak on. Now, it's curious to note the preview build we tested on Series X actually offered three modes. The idea was you had 1440p60 on normal, 4K30 on high resolution, but then a final high frame rate mode added to the mix too. This rendered at 1080p, the knock-on benefit being, well, at least the promise was, a tighter 60fps lock than the normal mode, which could drop during special moves. Now, to this day, the normal mode does still drop in fact, but we'll get to that later. Still, developer Ryuga Gotoku Studio clearly decided this extra frame rate mode wasn't necessary for the final game and focused on the other two, perhaps to optimize better for 1440p and 60fps for the final game, at least it keeps things simple. And with that, it seems they have some success as we'll see in performance tests. But before we get to that, let's go to the graphics comparisons. 
So a word on comparisons. Other than the raw pixel metrics, there's nothing really between the modes themselves. It's a simple change in pixel count from 1440p to 4K between the normal and high resolution modes. So with that in mind, let's focus on how PS5 and Series X compare on just the 1440p 60 normal mode here. The aesthetic of Yakuza is energetic and densely packed with NPCs and objects, places to explore, but the fundamentals are quite simple. Textures at points can be rather plain and low res in close up shots, and honestly that's the case for both machines here. LODs for geometry, shadows and everything else is matched in this opening chase scene too, nothing to split PS5 or Series X at all. But look close and there is a visible difference in shadows between the two. Let's zoom in here to show the shadow difference. Nothing major, but curiously, both PS5 and Series X's approach to shadow rendering are different to PCs, where neither translates exactly to any given preset, low, medium, or high. They both come closest visually perhaps to the medium setting on PC in resolution, but the filtering method is wildly different on PS5, which ends up drawing thicker lines, while Series X also differs. Between the consoles, it's not clear which is intended, PS5s appear darker, but they both draw in at the same range. It's an anomaly, worth mentioning since, well, honestly there isn't much else to say between these two. They both look identical in every other way besides a slight gamma shift for the darker on PS5. Perhaps the more stark difference is between Series S and Series X. Again we're going with the normal mode, 60fps on both systems, but running at 900p on S and 1440p on X. Here we do see more shimmer, more visual noise on Series S, as if the chosen anti-aliasing is struggling to keep up with the low pixel count of 900p on left. Besides the drop in image quality though, the settings are absolutely identical. Pop-in occurs on geometry at the same points, shadow quality is dropped on Series S, though it uses the same technique as X, but the clarity of edges is lowered slightly. Also, the other main difference here is post effects like depth of field and bloom, which are seemingly attached to the game's base resolution. The net result in these cases is the bokeh depth of field, for example, during cutscenes is more defined on Series X. Performance next. Now the 1440p 60 and 4K 30 mode split makes sense on paper and in practice too when booting like a dragon on PC. So for perspective before going to the consoles, it's worth saying my AMD Threadripper 1950X and Titan X Pascal machine can handle max settings at 1440p 60 no problem. It's still a strong enough GPU today to handle it, but it's fascinating to see bumping it to say 1800p drops performance to an average of 50 FPS while roaming the city. And if we go to a 100% 4K here, that baseline frame rate goes further down to 40 FPS. All things considered, the custom RDNA 2 architecture of PS5 and Series X isn't getting an exact parallel here, but it gives a kind of perspective of how taxing this engine can be, and how high a target 4K60 would have been. So with that in mind, let's kick off with PS5 on its normal mode, 1440p and 60fps. From the outset, this really is the mode to use on PS5 or Series X for that matter. For any roaming around the city, it's flawless, barring the occasional transition to a cutscene. Really, it makes the game a joy to explore. 99% of the time, it's perfect in general traversal. That's not to say the game as a whole is flawless. Battles are the main offender for any rare drops, as we saw in our Series X tests on normal mode back in the preview. Now, I've tried my level best to put a dent in the story here, playing to about 5 hours in on each machine, but yes, there's plenty more to do and see beyond this. More areas, more attacks. What we do have here, after 5 hours, paints a good enough picture of what to expect. So to pick out the highlights as far as frame rate drops go, with any big tag team skills like Essence of Mayhem, you're looking at drops to around the 50fps line for a second. Lots of high resolution, full screen alpha is the culprit as always, but it's so momentary and detached from the real time controls, it really won't affect your enjoyment. That goes for PS5 and Series X in equal measure and neither really escapes it, and likewise for the reckless charge move, we again see dips into the 50s. So ultimately, the same issue on both, but neither are that glaring. Normal mode works brilliantly then, and there's not much to split PS5 and Series X, 
given it's mostly a lock. The game runs perpetually at 60fps with only occasional drops in the same spots. Now, the Series S version really follows suit in this regard. The drop to 900p is a big sacrifice, but World Traversal again is a flawless 60. Battles, however, are prone to bigger, more intense drops when alpha effects overwhelm the screen. Since it's so brief, it's rarely an issue, but it's a sign Series S does have a weakness in GPU bandwidth that even a move to 900p doesn't quite balance out. Still playable? Absolutely. Especially for anything where you're in control. The 60fps mode then, it works on all next-gen systems. A huge benefit of moving to turn-based menu JRPG mechanics is not having to react so much in real-time. But that being said, there is an element of timing, with button prompts during moves, and also perfect guards, which are executed by tapping circle or B just as an enemy strikes. It kind of takes a leaf out of Super Mario RPG's book by mixing the real-time with the turn-based, and Like a Dragon feels all the more involving for it. But as far as PS5, Series X and S playback goes, it has no real issue delivering at 60fps. On all three, there are stutters just as you land a finishing move on the last enemy, but that's really it. A curious aside here, all the minigames at the arcades also run at 60fps. Virtua Fighter 2, Virtua Fighter 5, Super Hang On, all of them deliver. The only outlier is Space Harrier, which seems to lock at 56fps constantly. Here's PS5 an example, but it affects all consoles. It's possibly a side effect of emulating arcade cabinets meant for a 56Hz refresh, and that's upheld in the emulation here too. Otherwise, all the game's extras run at 60, even the karaoke. Last up is of course the high resolution modes. Running at 4K30 on PS5 and Series X, and 1440p30 on Series S. The fact is, world exploration is a flat 30fps, but with a catch. The frame pacing on the left side graph does show occasional issues here. In battle it flares up even more so. Sub 30fps drops aren't the issue so much as improper delivery of frames. Selecting big moves for example triggers a longer series of trills between 16 and 50 milliseconds that can create the perceived effect of drops even if it technically is 30fps on average. But with that said, big skill moves are the only one way to actually cause a frame rate hit. On Series S, that'll take the form of a drop to the 20fps line. It's not ideal, but again, it's so detached from any real-time gameplay, it nullifies the issue. On PS5 and Series X, it's a similar story, just to a lesser extreme. This same tag team move pushes both to the mid-20s for a few seconds, but really, that's it. The rest of the game is a solid 30fps lock. For Series X and PS5, Like a Dragon looks beautiful at 4K, no question, but that's only in still frames. I will say moving to 30fps feels not only jarring after 60, but it also impacts playability to an extent. Input timing matters, and halving your refresh affects that. Moves deal extra damage with world time button presses, and the visual feedback is diminished at 30fps to hit the beat perfectly. Perhaps worst of all, check out the karaoke in 30fps mode. All the UI drags along the screen in a blur like this, and it's just far easier to make out the prompts in the normal 60fps mode. Something to consider, but it made a big difference for me. All of which brings us to a bit of a stalemate between PS5 and Series X. Both deliver with two modes that have different priorities, where 60fps is arguably the more sensible choice. Besides the discrepancy in shadows, we're looking at parity, which is to be expected given it's a cross-gen title. Loading times are usually a factor in comparisons too, but Like a Dragon's Fate of Blacks last barely a split second in this case, when moving between locations. So again, there's very little in it. Perhaps most fascinating is how Series S is handled then, a version that takes a serious hit to resolution to match the Premiere machines and features, and somehow pulls it off. Like a Dragon shows us how future Dragon Engine titles might take shape all round on next gen. With focused development on PS5, Series X and S, on the next gen entry we might see these machines in full flex. But for now, this is certainly a fine effort. But that's all from me today. If you did enjoy this look at Yakuza Like a Dragon, feel free to like or subscribe and don't forget to hit that bell to get notifications as any new video lands. To get a high quality version of this video, check out our Patreon at digitalfoundry.net and get in touch with myself or the team, just use Twitter. But from me for now, thanks for watching. You want sudden death or sudden? It's
service with a bounty. Thanks for calling Pound Mates.